Getting started with RetroPie is now the easiest it's ever been. It's even easy to customize the look of your copy of RetroPie or add box art and descriptions to your games. I'm James from Print and Play, and I'm here to guide you through the process. But first, let me thank the sponsor of this tutorial, PCBWay. PCBWay is the easy way to add custom electronics to your projects. They offer the ability to take your custom PCBs from design to reality, with all sorts of options and flexibility. Beyond that, they also offer CNC and 3D printing services to help make sure your project looks as cool on the outside as it does on the inside. From now until the end of December, their Christmas festival sale is live, with coupons and discount codes for orders big and small, and additional prizes and giveaways too. And as always, first-time customers get a $5 discount code, making many first PCB orders free. You can check out PCBWay by clicking on the link in the description of this video. To get started with RetroPie, you'll need a few things. I picked up a Raspberry Pi 4 with my last order from PCBWay, but this tutorial will work with all versions of the Pi. You'll also need a memory card to store your image, as well as a way to connect that memory card to your computer. Anything over 8 gigs will work, but the bigger the collection you want, the larger card you'll need. Get yourself a decent quality power supply. I like at least 3 amps for the Pi 4, and at least 2.5 amps for the 3 and lower. And finally, you'll need a controller to control your Pi. And that's it for the absolute needs, but I'd also recommend appropriate cooling in a case to protect your Pi while it's in use. For software, first start off by heading over to raspberrypi.com forward slash software. From there, we can download the Raspberry Pi Imager software. After downloading it, install it, and let it run after closing the installer. Now you can choose the operating system. We're looking for RetroPie, which is under the Emulation and Games OS. Select the version of RetroPie that is suitable for your Pi. In my case, it's the version for the Pi 4 400. Next, you'll want to choose the storage device. Make sure you select the right one, as it's going to erase everything on it. Finally, click Write, and yes when prompted to overwrite your card. After writing is finished, it'll also do a verify to make sure the write was successful. It's only happened once or twice for me that it wasn't, but it saves a lot of time troubleshooting you down the line if you let the verify run now. Now, before removing it, I recommend opening up the newly created boot drive on the SD card. From there, let's add a text file called wifi keyfile.txt. The extension for the file should be .txt, but that might be hidden under the default settings on your computer. Edit the new text file, and add a line for your wireless access point, or SSID, as well as your passkey, or PSK. Set the values to what your wireless network uses. This will make it easier to join the network once we've started up and won't require a USB keyboard to enter the values. Save the text file, and now it's time to install the card on your Pi. While we're at it, let's connect power, the controller, and video as well. On first boot up, once in emulation station, you'll have to define your controller. Using the first player controller, hold down a button until the mapping screen displays. From there, just go through the wizard, pressing the buttons on the controller that correspond to what's on screen. If your controller is missing buttons, just hold down any of the other buttons for a couple of seconds until it says skip. And that's the basic setup. But to get ROMs onto the device, we're also going to want to connect to the Wi-Fi. Go into the RetroPie configuration screen. From here, launch raspi-config. Select localization options from the displayed menu. Select WLAN country. Scroll through the list and select the appropriate country code for where you live. Then move the cursor over to the OK to complete the selection. Then move the cursor to finish and allow the Pi to reboot when prompted. Once the reboot is complete, Go again to the RetroPie configuration screen, and this time select Wi-Fi from the list. Now select import Wi-Fi credentials from forward slash boot forward slash Wi-Fi keyfile.txt. After some time, your Pi should connect to Wi-Fi and display the Wi-Fi name and IP address. Write down the IP address for future reference because we'll need that to copy ROMs to the Pi. Go ahead and move your cursor to the exit, and let's get some games on here. From your file browser window on your computer, enter in backslash backslash followed by the IP address you recorded from your Pi earlier. You should be greeted with four folders, BIOS, Configs, ROMs, and Splash Screen. Let's navigate to the ROMs folder. 
Here you'll find a list of all the systems that RetroPie supports out of the box. Pick the one you want to install ROMs to, for this example I'll be using the NES. Copy your ROMs into the folder and, on the Raspberry Pi, press Start, select Quit from the menu, and select Restart Emulation Station. After restarting, you'll find the console you just added ROMs to is now listed, and the games you added are now accessible by selecting them from that system. If you're in a game, you can quit back to the main menu by pressing the key that you bound as the hotkey during your controller setup and the start button at the same time. If you didn't bind a hotkey, it's usually defaulted to pressing select and start simultaneously. Next, what if you want to customize the look of your RetroPie install? Well, we can add custom themes. Go back to the RetroPie configuration screen, then select ES Themes from the menu. Now select the themes you want to add. In my case, I want to add the NES Mini and SNES Mini themes. Then move the cursor to the Cancel button and back your way out of the menu. Back in RetroPie, press Start, then select UI Settings. From the theme set, select the theme you'd like to run, and then select Back to display the new theme. And I think that new theme looks great. But now what if you wanted to display box art and game descriptions? Well, we can use the integrated RetroPie scraping service. Press the start button on your controller and select Scraper. Next, select Scrape Now. Turn off User Decides on Conflicts and click Start. When the scrape is complete, you'll now find box art and descriptions for all the supported games in your library. Add all the games you want to your library and customize your RetroPie setup the way you'd like it. From my understanding, the scraper does limit the number of scrapes you can do a month, so depending on the size of your library, you might have to spread out your scraping over time. And finally, what if you want to get your friends in on the action? Well, we can add additional controllers. Press Start and select Configure Input. Then select Yes, and much like during the initial setup, you'll press and hold a button on the controller that you want to configure. Follow the configuration wizard, and then press and hold any button when you're missing a button and need to leave it undefined. Then repeat this process for as many controllers as you'd like to add. And now you're ready for some couch co-op. Thanks so much for following this tutorial, I hope it helped you out. And thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping push this content forward. If you have another RetroPie tutorial you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again soon, but until then, stay creative.